Today on Earth Focus, the dark side of shrimp and smartphone industries. Reports from Thailand, Bangladesh, and Indonesia uncover the brutal exploitation of people and the environment for profit. Coming up on Earth Focus. This trawler is fishing illegally within the waters of a national park on Thailand's Andaman coast. It has just caught over 50 species of fish, including giant starfish, pufferfish, seahorses, and juvenile sea snakes. Most of this catch is not destined for human consumption, though, but will instead be used to feed factory farm animals. It will also be used to feed farmed prawns, which are sold to supermarkets and restaurants around the world. Link TV and The Ecologist visited Thailand to investigate the links between our growing love affair with tropical prawns and Southeast Asia's dying oceans. Industrial aquaculture promotes itself as a sustainable solution to the problems of overfishing. But farmed carnivorous species such as prawns still need fish in their diet, and many of these so-called trash fish are sourced from the oceans around Southeast Asia with devastating effect. Caught in indiscriminate fishing nets, these small, young or inedible fish are left to rot in the holds of vessels for days or weeks on end before being landed. Fleets of trucks transport tons of rotting fish from each vessel onto processing plants, where they are ground down, washed and cooked into powdered fish flour for feed. Alongside the species filmed on fishing vessels, researchers also documented buckets of juvenile shark species, including reef and threatened bamboo sharks, waiting to be sold onto the fish meal plants. These tropical fish are used as a cheap and protein-rich feed for Thailand's booming shrimp industry, the largest exporter of prawns in the world. But at what cost to the ocean? คือถ้าเป็นวัลลาบเมื่อไหร่นะคะเราถือว่าเป็นเครื่องมือทําลายล้างตัวนึงเลยแล้วถ้าเขาลาบที่พื้นท้องทะเลที่บอตตอมด้
แต่ถ้าถามเขาว่าแล้วทำไมยังไม่ขยายขนาดตาอวนปรับเป็ดที่ได้มาเป็นต้นทุนกำไรคือตาที่จับที่มีขนาดโตอิสนอตจัสต์เน็ตส์และฟิชชิ่งเทคนิคส์ที่เป็นความเสี่ยงสูงแต่ว่าในการควบคุมรวจสอบการค้าขายที่ทำงานกับผู้ผลิตฟิชมิลล์ผลิตในรานองเขาบอกเราว่าหลายคนที่ทำงานกับผู้ผลิตฟิชมิลล์ผลิตในรานองโอเปอเรชันเบอร์มีสวอเตอร์สอ often under licensing agreements from the military junta. Because the Burma have many Thai many fish because in Thailand. ตาน้อยลงละ Less fish. She claims that her company supplies a prominent feed company in Thailand, which in turn produces much of the feed for prawns that are eventually fed to consumers in North America and Europe. Faced with decreasing fish stocks close to home. We also uncovered evidence to suggest that Thai fishing fleets are venturing further afield, frequently operating illegally in foreign waters. Our research found that these modern-day pirates use destructive fishing technology in waters all across Asia, from Indonesia to Bangladesh, hoovering up trash fish in the process of searching for more valuable fish species. They also exploit the Burmese workforce on board the vessels. We spoke to Burmese fishermen about life on board Thai trawlers. They asked that we do not reveal their identity. I will tell you that we are working on this work. We are going to be able to save the Thai people. We are going to be able to save them. If you are in the Mekau, we are going to be able to do what we can do. If you are going to be able to do what we can do. นี่อันตรายมากแล้วก็เขาให้กินก็ไก่เก่งเขาให้รีก็เลยเขาให้หนอก็นอนอะไรเนี่ยเขาให้เต็งกันทีบางทีก็มันกดแบกแบกกดแบกนะก็เราก็เต็งกันทีใครก็ไม่ได้นี่อะไรก็มันก็ไม่ได้เทียงกันไม่ได้ต้องลุกขึ้นทํางานตันทีเลยตอนนั้นก็เข้าทีวาที่อะไรตะคินอะไรก็ตะดูเอลิกลิกลิกอะไรลิกลิทำเชียอะไรทำอวงลิกมันมีตะรุตะรุแบบนี้แบบนั้นมันตีแล้วก็สกินมันอยู่ที่ติดกันหัวหน้ามันก็ยิงแบบนี้ยิ้มไปด้วยนะยิ้มไปยิ้มไปหัวฉีดไปแบบนี้สามสี่ขั้นอะไรแบบนี้ก็เจก็เราก็ไม่กล้านี้ไปก็ไม่ได้ไม่ผมมีไปก็มันติดต่ออยู่ประจังอะไรแบบนี้ปางของก็มันกระดูกอะไรหายไปก็มีมีบ้าง Touted as a solution to overfishing, this investigation has found that the feed used in industrial shrimp aquaculture in Thailand is indirectly driving illegal fishing, ecological destruction, and chronic human rights abuses in coastal Thai waters and across Southeast Asia. The global shrimp industry continues to rebrand itself as sustainable, but this film raises important questions. About the unreported cost of prawn aquaculture, the feed ingredients used to grow them. Until the feed issue is addressed, the fate of Southeast Asia's precious marine biodiversity continues to hang in the balance. Offered in restaurants and sold in stores. Tropical prawns are a popular choice of food across the Western world today. But how did this luxury product become affordable, and at what cost? The region of Khulna in southwestern Bangladesh is the country's leading producer of prawns for export overseas. It is at the centre of a bitter struggle, pitting thousands of impoverished people. Who are fighting to conserve their natural resources and livelihoods against the might of the prawn industry? Mother, life is hard. We are busy. Thaka is very costly. Life is hard. Just to keep new ideas coming. A farmer by profession, Noor Jahan Begum, like countless others, has lost her family's land to shrimp farming. Flooded with salt water by aggressive shrimp farmers, her family's once fertile cropland. Today lies under a prawn pond. She's not alone. Do I have to do all this? 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 Do I have to do all
খুব অভাবগ্রস্ত হয়ে যাচ্ছে এলাকায় ফসলা দিনে গরু বাছুর হাঁস মুরগি গবাদি পশু সব কিছু ধ্বংসের বিলুপ্ত প্রায় এলাকা একেবারে মরুভূমিতে পরিণত হয়ে গেছে এলাকার সমস্ত রাস্তাঘাট অবকাঠামো সব কিছু ধ্বংসে পরিণত প্রায় জলাধারও আছে যেগুলো বহিরাগত মালিকদের মানে প্রশাসনিক কাঠামোকে আতে নিয়ে এগুলো দখল বুক দখল করা তাদের পক্ষে অত্যন্ত সহজ It is not just the communities where shrimp are cultivated that are threatened however The rivers in this region flow into the vast Sundarbans mangrove forest providing sanctuary to endangered species of river dolphins and crocodile whilst also providing a vital food resource to local communities but most shrimp farms in Bangladesh stock their ponds with wild caught shrimp larvae and these are caught in the rivers using very fine nets for every shrimp caught an average of 50 juvenile fish will die and this practice is decimating the marine environment Embankments are used in this region of coastal Bangladesh to protect farmland and communities from storms that regularly hit this coastline. But shrimp farmers in Bangladesh illegally build drainage systems through the embankments and the consequences of this have proven to be catastrophic during times of extreme weather. Cyclone Ayla struck Bangladesh several years ago. এবং এখানে চিংড়ি চাষ করায় নদীর ভাঙন হচ্ছে মানে প্রাকৃতিক দুর্যোগে ইফেক্ট হচ্ছে তাতে আমাদের জমি জমা নষ্ট হচ্ছে আমাদের মানুষের জীবনযাত্রার ক্ষতি হচ্ছে আমাদের এলাকার মানুষের নেই ইনকাম মানুষের এই আইলার পরে আমরা During the course of the investigation our team also uncovered disturbing evidence to suggest that illegal chemicals are being regularly and routinely used in shrimp farms destined for European markets মূলত এটা ইন্ডিয়া থেকে নিয়ে আসার জন্য যে এটা দিলে ভালো কাজ হয় এবং একশোতে একশো রেজাল্ট পাওয়া যায় আর কি এই জন্য মূলত কিন্তু এটা অত্যন্ত ক্ষতিকারক কারণ এটা আমি নিজে ব্যবহার করছি নিজে ব্যবহার করছি মানে আপনাকে আমি কিভাবে বোঝাবো এর ক্ষতির ধরন যে ইনলেট পাইপ দিয়ে পানি ঢুকতেছে আমাদের ভিত জমিতে ঠিক সেই মুহূর্তে আমার ঔষধটা প্রয়োগ করা পড়ছিল মানে স্রোত যে পর্যন্ত গেছিল এবং তো কিছুই ছিল না এমনকি সাপ মারা গেছিল এখানকার যারা তৎকালীন সময় মৎস্য চাষ করেন আমাকে ডেকে নিয়ে গেছিল তো তুমি কি ওষুধ ব্যবহার করছো The household name of the chemical he is referring to is hildan an endosulfan that is banned in Bangladesh and over 80 other countries around the world Endosulfan is a broad spectrum insecticide Endosulfan's been around for years it's a very old chemical uh, it's aimed at killing insects uh, and, and preventing them from becoming pests. The impact of endosulfan on the marine environment is disastrous. Um, it's a persistent chemical, it's an incredibly toxic chemical, it's one that affects nearly every element of the aquatic ecosystem from, uh, the, from snails through to fish through to amphibians. All the way up the food chain it has an impact. Endosulfan is banned in a huge number of countries around the world and it's banned for a reason. That's because it's dangerous, that it damages the environment. So my message to consumers uh, who eat prawns from, from ponds where endosulfan might be in use is, don't do it. It is not just the unregulated use of illegal chemicals that consumers should be worried about. In 2010, a British film crew also uncovered evidence 
of routine adulteration of shrimp destined for factories that supply the EU. In this footage, the trader demonstrates how shrimp from this region in Bangladesh are secretly injected with dirty water to add weight and thus profit before they are sold onto the factories. Some NGOs and aid agencies have often claimed that the export-orientated shrimp industry in Bangladesh is necessary for development. Kushi Kabir is the coordinator of Nigeria Kori, a movement of over 200,000 landless and marginalised people affected by commercial shrimp aquaculture. It is anti-development. People who are living in areas where shrimp is being cultivated are being completely devoid of their livelihoods, of their lives often, because there's so much violence. It's a system that's totally non-sustainable. And just to provide some food for people to be able to eat cheaply in the northern countries and the consumer countries, how can that be development? Faced with the loss of their land and livelihood, our investigation found that those who oppose the shrimp industry are often met with intimidation, violence and false charges from corrupt local judiciaries who favour the shrimp farmers. আন্দোলন করতেছিস এ আন্দোলন করে তোদের হচ্ছে এটা কি বা নিজেরা করি কারা এগুলো করিস কেন Allegations of sexual harassment towards women in rural communities by those employed in the shrimp industry are also commonplace. Rafisa is one of the few prepared to speak out against the shrimp farm employee who raped her in 2008. <laughs> Our research into Bangladesh showed that the Bangladeshi shrimp industry in Kulna has forged a brutal path of ongoing ecological destruction and human rights abuses for the last two decades, subjecting thousands of people to extreme poverty whilst also potentially undermining the health of consumers. But it doesn't have to be like this. Umila Sardar lives on Polder 22, one of a few areas that has managed to successfully get rid of shrimp farms, and the difference is striking. <laughs> মানে <laughs> The message from the communities affected by shrimp farming is clear. The <laughs> তাদেরকে কত বিভিন্ন ধরনের শোষণ করে এই বাগদা চিংড়িটা তারা 
চাষ করে আর চাষ করে এইটা বিদেশে রপ্তানি করছে দয়া করে এই বাংলাদেশের এই চিংড়িটা যেন তারা না কেনে আমি তাদেরকে অনুরোধ করব অন বিক্রি হয়ে যায় তাহলে আর আমরা কোনো এই যদি বিক্রি বন্ধ হয়ে যায় কোনো দিন তাহলে সুখে This giant mining ship is sucking up tin from a turtle nesting ground in the coral-rich Java Sea. It is the latest expansion in the global hunt for minerals to build smartphones for consumers around the world. Tin solder prices have skyrocketed in recent years, fueling a wild west economy in mineral-rich islands such as Bangka in Indonesia, which produces nearly one third of all the world's tin. Much of this tin is used as solder a key component in the production of electronic devices such as smartphones and tablets but at what cost thousands of mining sites big and small scar the island muddy quagmires that swallow up land and people tapi kami tu punya beban tu tetap punya beban tiga kawan tu kejadian kurang lebih jam setengah 12 saya langsung saya apa itu uh, mengeluarkan suara bawa tanah longsor langsung saya lepas semprotan saya lari uh, ternyata saya juga ketimbun tanah Suge is one of many who depend on mining for their livelihoods but others we spoke to on the island are deeply opposed to the industry dulu air ini bersih bisa diminum sekarang ada TI in 2009, this footage was taken of a community protest calling for the cancellation of a new mine to be built by the largest Indonesian tin mining company, PT Timmer, that campaigners claim would destroy large tracts of forest and farmland. Karena saat ini uh, diklaim oleh perusahaan bahwa ini adalah konsesi perusahaan PT Timmer, kondisi yang bisa kita saksikan adalah suasana hutan yang sudah tidak ada lagi dan berganti menjadi areal pertambangan timah skala besar. Tidak akan pernah sama, karena memang alamnya seperti itu, sulit sekali membuat yang sama, jadi jawabannya tidak. Kalau tadi ditanya karena mengenai animal, mengenai binatang, kita tidak pernah melakukan itu, tetapi tidak akan seperti sama, karena habitatnya berbeda, tentu binatangnya juga berbeda. As tin deposits are being exhausted on land, Companies are beginning to move offshore in the hunt for new reserves of tin under the seabed. This ocean mining platform is one of a fleet of vessels also owned by the minerals giant PT Timmer, a state-owned corporation that has laid claim to over 100,000 hectares of seabed mining rights. But our investigation has found that seabed mining from platforms both large and small is being blamed for a host of problems. Dampak timah di laut itu adalah juga sama merusak lingkungan ya. E, pertama karena kekeruhan, ya. karena ini kan seperti hanya mengaduk saja. Jadi kekeruhan, akibat kekeruhan ada siltasi ya, atau siltation. Itu akhirnya beberapa jenis hewan juga tidak bisa, tidak bisa hidup. E, terumbu karang, coral reef juga mati. Akhirnya juga ikan dan terus berantai, ikan semakin sulit sekarang di sini kan. Gitu. And some of the ocean's most charismatic animals are being threatened as a result. The island's green turtles, already a globally endangered species, rely on beach nesting sites and seagrass, which are being destroyed by tin mining. Jadi tahun 2004 itu ada masih naik sekitar 12 sarang. Nah, sekarang ini dari mulai 2004, 2005 itu sangat menurun, menurun, menurun. Bahkan di tahun 2012 ini sama sekali nggak ada. Karena ya, ya penting ini kan apa namanya kalau namanya penyu itu dilihat bentuknya juga indah ya kan kalau sampai ini tuntun nanti punya anak-anak cucu kita itu nggak bakal tahu lagi gitu loh namanya penyu itu gimana gitu. At Rebo Village, we spoke to local fishermen who have also been affected by offshore tin mining. Alasan ya, terutamanya masalahnya pengaruh penghasilan lah. airnya kan keruh air lautnya jadi keruh hasil tangkapan kurang The fishermen in Rebo join together with other nearby villages to campaign for dredges and suction ships to stay out of their bay 
Nah, untuk sementara sih kayaknya mereka mesti berpikir-pikir dulu kalau mau masuk karena sebab empat kampung yang kita ini. Nah, untuk selanjutnya kita belum nggak tahu lah belum belum tahu sih. Campaign group Friends of the Earth claim that Apple and Samsung use tin solder that has almost certainly been mined from Bangka and are calling on both companies to be more transparent in the way they source minerals for their electronic devices. When contacted by the ecologist, both companies declined to reveal whether they source from the island. Samsung said in a statement that they are committed to upholding the highest standards of corporate responsibility and we continue to evaluate our sourcing policy to ensure they comply with global standards associated with our industry. Apple said that we require our suppliers only use materials that have been procured through a conflict-free process and from sources that adhere to our standards of human rights and environmental protection. Consumers around the world continue to buy ever greater numbers of mobile phones. Until the true cost of mining for tin is addressed, the future of Banker Island hangs in the balance.